Okay, nerds, Brandon here, and I'm starting out this week's review with Batman 16, right? Who saw that coming? Me reviewing Batman. But this is great. We're finally getting to see what the Joker has planned and what what's going to be going on with like all all of Joker's plans are coming to an end and we're seeing just how he's outsmarting Batman and what he's doing to attack him and attacking the family. And the ending to this issue is just outrageous. There's a backup story by Jock, which takes place after the end of the issue. So we get to see them setting up for the next one. And there's a whole what's in the box moment. And I think I know what's in the box and I'm really afraid to read next issue. But, oh my God, I don't even know. But I'm, I'm, I'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls. Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, you guys continue to just knock this title out of the park. Hey guys, I got to read Creator Owned Heroes number eight this week, and this was my first time ever reading this book, which was okay since they're all new stories. And I enjoyed certain aspects of it, but there were a lot of things that I didn't like about just kind of the book in general. What I really liked about it was that it's uh, you get this indie feel from it that you don't have typical writing. It's all presented differently, like not not the writing itself, but the way that it's pre like actually physically presented, which was cool because it just it kind of opened up my own creativity just because I was looking at something different. Um, the first story that you get in this one was kind of like a film noir, but then it gets a little bit sci-fi, which was a little bit weird, but once you get used to it, it's an interesting story. Um, if you saw that episode of Buffy where the old lady has the snake coming out of her head, that's kind of what it reminded me of. <laughs> um, so if you're a Buffy fan, be kind of like, cool. And it's also kind of very film noir, so it's fun. The second one was a bit poetic, which I enjoyed. Um, it's a very short story, but it, it just kind of warms your heart. And then the third story I did not like at all because it was, it was just one of those cliche Mr. and Mrs. Smith, ooh, we both want to kill each other, but we love each other. I just felt like I've read this story a million times before, and I just wasn't on board. Um, if you like it, go ahead and read it. But I would just say, uh, this book is kind of OK. I'm going to give it two and a half nerd skulls. Hey there, gang. Jim here with a review of Star Wars number one from Dark Horse. I was super excited to read this because they're taking us back to the original characters. And not only that, because a lot of times they do that and they pick up after the original trilogy. But no, they're going back to right after A New Hope, after the Death Star blew up, and they're showing us the characters, both the uh, Rebellion and the Empire, and how they're picking up the pieces from either failing miserably because the Death Star blew up, or from the fact that they succeeded in blowing up the Death Star. And it's really cool because we get Mon Motha, we get Princess Leia, we get Luke Skywalker, we get Wedge, we get Chewie, we get Han Solo, Darth Vader, the Emperor. And it's really cool to see these characters once again, but some of them, like we've sort of experienced with the New Hope, aren't very good at what they do, like Luke Skywalker. He doesn't have his powers yet. It's nice to see that. So I really enjoy this. I highly recommend it. It's very cool because at the end, it looks like Leia is going to get sort of this commando group to try and find out if there's a spy in the rebellion and one, obviously, to defeat it and to try and find a new place where the rebellion can go. And we obviously know when Empire Strikes Back, it becomes Hoth. Well, we get to see how they're going to get there, I'm assuming. So I'm very excited by this. I'm going to give this book four out of five Nerd Skulls. Hey guys, Cubby here with my comic reviews for this week. First up, I got to read Threshold Presents The Hunted, number one, by DC. It's actually a really cool space-themed book. They're going to be doing a lot of space-centric stories. They have a huge universe that they've... Since they restarted, they haven't really, you know, gone on, gone too far into. They mainly, you know, if you're reading Green Lantern and stuff like that, it's it stayed the course because they did a bunch of stuff earlier. Now it's this is all the other random B-list characters, C-list characters, throwing them together, putting them into new situations, and eh, it's okay. It's it's a cheesy romp, you know, space romp of a comic book. It's a total ripoff of. Uh, the Running Man, which is kind of cool. I mean, it, they do it in, in its own way, but just the 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 talking, the conversations, the the action of it. It seemed a little weird and clunky, and the artwork at certain points it looked awesome. There was these great shots, these great people that are awesomely detailed in the foreground, in the background. There's still awesome, cool details. And then you go through and like the action pages where you would probably want a little more refinement in the in the in the panels, not so much. And it's a little weird and. 
just reminded me of like all the bad stuff in comics I don't like. Not to say that it was a bad story, a bad read. It just, eh. The, you're, you're doing a cool space story and you're doing your characters like, like old school retro future stuff. Like what people in the 90s would have thought was cool and awesome futuristic looking. Eh, not my cup of tea. But whatevs. Uh, if you like it, that's you. You live your life. Let your freak flag fly. Anyways, uh, that was the first part. The second part, the Larflee's backup story. Holy crap. Larflee is such an awesome character, and they do some messed up stuff to him. And, of course, he's going to get pissed off. And it's cool. You get to see him really, like, rage out. It's really, really fun book. Or a fun little story. I can't wait to see what they do with that. And I'm really excited for that. So I would definitely recommend it for the second part which I'm going to give four out of five Nerd Skulls. First story, I'm going to give two and a half. It was a good effort. It was a good story to read, entertaining, but not my thing. So check it out, guys. Okay, next up I got to read Frankenstein, Agent of Shade 16. And this was a hard read for me because I know it's the last issue. I have definitely enjoyed this book. It's one of the top books out of the New 52. I, I love it. I'm so disappointed this is the end. Uh, you got the whole Creature Commandos, which has always been one of my favorite teams in DC. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's a good farewell issue. It sets it up. I mean, I know we're going to see him in Justice League Dark. And hopefully we see more of the Creature Commando somewhere. But I'm giving this 5 out of 5 Nerd Skulls. Please bring back Frankenstein DC. This is such a great book and I'm going to miss it so much. Hey guys, I got to read Alpha Point One, and I have to say, uh, when I read his story in Amazing Spider-Man, I was actually really excited about this character because it's it's a different new character that we get, and I really wanted to hear more stories about him. So when I heard that he got a comic, I got really excited. However, if you read him in Amazing Spider-Man, these pages may look familiar to you because it is his exact origin story just pulled right out of Amazing Spider-Man. So if you are into this character, I would say wait for the next issue if you already read Amazing Spider-Man. With that said, if you don't know what Alpha is about, it's about this kid who, you know, he's a normal guy, he gets picked on at school and everything. Very similar to Peter Parker. And then uh, a, a Peter Parker has an experiment that goes wrong, and he ends up becoming responsible for this kid becoming a superhero. So it's really fun to kind of see Spider-Man have to mentor this kid who's kind of a pain for him to deal with. So it's really fun. I'm excited for the new ones. I'm going to give it three nerd schools only because I wish that I got new content. So next up I got to read Archer and Armstrong number six. As you know, big fan of this series. I really like it. This one, again, we're in this little slow area where we're obviously building to a new story. And I'm cool with that because we've seen where it's going. In this one, the main focus is that there, there's a new Geomancer and we're going to see her, not giving anything away, but we're going to see her basically come to power and how she comes about. So there's very little of Archer and Armstrong in this book, and that's probably the only disappointing thing that I can say about it, is that's what I like, is their relationship. And it finally occurred to me, if you ever read in the 90s, Quantum and Woody, that's the relationship I'm seeing with Archer and Armstrong. I love it in that there's not all this seriousness with one of them, and then there's ultra seriousness with the other. So I'm really digging the book. Highly recommend that you guys jump on board and start reading this one. This issue, I'm only gonna give three and a half nerd skulls, but I know it's gonna go to something bigger, so I'm super excited to see what they, where they take us. All right guys, so I also got to read Savage Wolverine number one, and whoa, I love this book. This is gonna be one of my favorite books coming up. Uh, you got Frank Cho doing art and writing it, and like he's not a bad writer at all. You would think that Frank Cho is such a great artist that eh, he probably you know is lackluster in his writing department, like some other artists I know. Do you see? Um, but he's actually really good. He knows how to tell a story, and it's a cool pulpy Wolverine story. It's all in his head. It's, he has a great narration to it. I love Wolverine narrating something because he always talks about his senses and how he picks up what's around him. It's really cool because most of the time you think of Wolverine, it's hacking and slashing. This he's actually thinking. You see how smart of a dude he is. Uh, also, Shanna the She-Devil's in it, and oh, she's looking pretty fine. So that's that's always cool. Frank Cho knows how to draw a woman and just make her look awesome the way you would want to see her in real life. It's never like that. But hey, you get to see it in, in this book, so it's totally cool. So that alone, I got to give this book five out of five nerd skulls. The story's actually really cool, and I can't wait to see where this is going. So it's a well-deserved five out of five nerd skulls. So check it out, guys. All right, next up I got to read Black Beetle number one from Dark Horse. Uh, I was waiting a while for this book. 
because it kind of looks like the old crime book I wanted to read, and that's exactly what it is. You really get a Lobster Johnson feel in this. Um, I'm not trying to compare either or. They're both really awesome in their own ways. But uh, I just, this, I, this is a really enjoyable book. It's a number one. I definitely pick it up. It's a, kind of a mini series, I'm sure, or it's one of four. So I'm sure they're going to kind of do the same thing that they're doing with, you know, other books like that. That this will be ongoing in mini series. But yeah, th this is just great. Uh, I'm giving it four to five nerd skulls. Hey guys, I am really excited that once again, Batgirl is progressively getting better. Um, before Death of the Family happened, I was really close to taking it off my pole. I just, I didn't feel that it was very strong, but man, Joker really brought a lot of awesome things to this story because now Batgirl has to kind of stand up for herself against this villain who she, you know, has feared her whole life. So now she's just becoming stronger and stronger. And I can't wait to see what happens to this book after Joker is gone. Just when she's back on her own, it's not going to be the same book. And I'm really excited to see the changes that, it ha that happened to her. So I'm just going to say pick it up, read it. It continues to be awesome. I'm going to give it four and a half nerd skulls. All right, guys, so I also get to read all new X-Men number six. And this book is a huge surprise for me because I was not excited with Brian Michael Bendis bringing back not only the original team, not only doing what he did with Beast. I mean, it was actually kind of cool. Like, I saw it coming. You kind of figure, oh, he's hurting on the inside. He's dying. Bull crap. No one dies in comic books anymore. So awesome. Thank you, Brian Michael Bendis, for making him look more like a beast now and less like Simba. I appreciate you for that. Um, but I, I really didn't think this book was going to be like substantial. I thought it was eh, whatever. It's going to be another X-Men book with another like awesome, like whatever, awesome writer. Um, who I, I feel on his other stuff, he's really like lagged he, when he was leaving Avengers. It was cool. It ended up being really, really cool, but I, I just lost interest in it. And I couldn't really get into it anymore. With this, I'm totally reinvigorated with the X-Men. It's awesome. It's really, 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 really good. The, the way he handles the characters, Gene and Kitty Pride, the way they interact with each other, the way Cyclops is kind of seeing his, his life, how it's turned out, the young Cyclops, I should say, how it's turned out and how he wants to stop it because he does not want to be that person. It just, the characterization is really, really spot on. And then the artwork on this book is just to die for is, I, I think that's like the best way to describe. So definitely check this book out. I'm giving it four out of five nerd skulls. Read it now. All right, I got a chance to read Mars Attacks, the Ghostbusters, one shot. This was a lot of fun. I've enjoyed the Mars Attacks book and I was kind of wondering how they were going to tie this into all these other titles they kept showing, like, uh, you know, Mad Men and Ghostbusters and all that. And this is pretty cool. They go back to the original airing of Orson Welles' War of the World, um, the radio thing that everyone was freaking out about when it happened. And the aliens catch transmission of it, think that the invasion has started, go down there, nothing's going on. They crash the ship and die. And now we got alien ghosts. That's how we tie it into the Ghostbusters. This is a lot of fun if you're a fan of either franchise. I would definitely recommend picking it up. I'm giving it four to five nerd skulls. All right, guys, I also got to read Conan number 12 this week. It is the end of the death story arc. It's a three-part story arc, which was really awesome. It was the conclusion to all this big lead-up that's been going on with Belit and the, the Tigris, uh, the ship that Conan's been traveling on. Um, I've been following the story for a little while, and it's... This was a really, really awesome conclusion to the story arc. You think everyone's going to die, and luckily someone's able to save them. It's, of course, since it's like old-timey, there's no antibiotics ever. It's like a cold that everyone gets, and everyone's like on their deathbed, and this one chick just gives everyone a eh, remedy, quick remedy. So that's cool. Not everyone's dead. I thought it was going to be really depressing and sad, but no, Conan saved, and, and he saved everyone, which was really, really sweet. But there was one thing that he could not save, and it's really messed up. I do not want to spoil it for anyone. Read it. it, especially if you've read like the last couple issues. It just, boom, hits home. And it's like, oh no, Conan, you could have had that. That would have been so awesome. It would have been a little, oh, uh, sweet. Anyways, check it out. You'll know what I'm talking about. I'm giving this book five out of five nerd skulls because Brian Wood kicks butt and he deserves it. 